about 1990 something in the, um, the second half of the 20th century, this government, the, the, the governments from sort of mid 70s onwards have been what I would call neoliberal. They believe in just letting the free marketplace run wild. They believe in free markets, they believe in free everything. Free in the sense of without state controls. Um, particularly banks. Um, and they also believe in what we call commodification and privatisation. They believe that the state shouldn't be doing these things, that it should be done by private entities. So initially, they start saying the state may make these resource decisions, but it's got to be provided privately, not by the local authority home health service, but by an independent home health services, not by a local authority care home, but by an independent care home. So we privatise provision. Um, but ideally, the state wouldn't be in the ball. The, what, what, what one of my colleagues, I call, she's Professor Julia Twigg. She's written some fantastic stuff about carers. She's a Kent. She calls dirty business. She says caring is the dirty business. That's what the state doesn't want to be involved in, the dirty business. Um, and so instead of actually commissioning care, you give people money instead. You what's called commodify it. You say, look, um, Fred doesn't need this, this, and this. Fred needs 58 quid. Here's 58 quid sorted out. And so in the mid-90s, um, we bring in things called direct payments. Um, and direct payments have been great for quite a small number of people, but for them it's been fantastic. Um, but even after 15 years of direct payments, we um, still only have about 7% of the population getting them, of, of, of people that get support. 93% of social care is still paid the traditional way by um, paying for these services. So the government, um, the last government, and this present government's just as keen on it, came up with a brilliant idea called personal budgets. Um, the last government said, and this government said until recently, they wanted everybody to have a personal budget by April next year. Um, They've just uh, said that, in fact, they only want 70% now because it's such a crazy target. But everybody, um, uh, the new bill that's coming through says everybody will have a personal budget. So the question is, I mean, have you heard of personal budgets here or not? No. You have? Oh, gosh. It's a bit like the plague. I didn't know if it reached <coughs> Western Park. Does anybody know what the difference is between a personal budget and a direct payment? I'm going to be talking to social workers after lunch, and uh, I imagine their response will be pretty much the same, too. Um, what's the difference between a personal budget and a... Uh, uh, because most people will be being told they've got a personal budget. Um, well, the big difference is, do direct payments exist in law? Personal budgets don't have any, in social care, any existence at all. They're fluffy little clouds of ideas. <coughs> so that's the big difference. Universal credit at this stage? Uh, this was getting bleak enough. Only <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Shropshire volunteered to trial Universal Oh, did credit. it? Right. And my son, who's got Asperger's syndrome, was picked yeah. as one of the guinea pigs oh, to receive payment direct. People with Asperger's syndrome cannot manage money. No. And I had to get in touch with the housing. Associate, uh, housing benefits team to stop them paying him the money yeah, yeah. and continue. Otherwise, he would have got into arrears and mm -hmm, been evicted mm -hmm. from where he lives. That's just going to be so much trouble. It time. is going to be a huge problem because the thing about direct payments, although they can be empowering for some disabled people, they involve transferring risk from the state to the individual. Um, because the state, instead of having to sort things out and if things go wrong, the, the individual has to do that. Well, that's fair enough if you've got a PhD and you're a wheelchair user, as some of my friends are. They've got those skills. But, of course, what we're doing, because at least a third of community care service users don't have capacity to make fairly basic decisions, we're not transferring risk from the state to the individual. We're transferring state... We're recreating the liable family rule by this process. 
we're placing those obligations increasingly on family members. And we'll see that this is, I mean, I haven't got time to go into this, but what will happen with the new system is charging is going to be really ramped up. But you're going to be able to charge under the new Act for anything. All carers will have to pay charges for what they get. But you'll also have to pay for your assessment. Social work is going to become chargeable. Advocacy is going to become chargeable. And so we'll give you the money. Um, but if, 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 if you say, I'm not prepared to do it, they'll give for your son, the, they'll give it to a broker. And of course, that money will then have to be used for the broker as well as. So they'll say, well, he's much worse off because you're not prepared to manage it. We run, we run a, uh, an emotional support service for uh, parent carers of children with disabilities or visual needs up to 25. And we've been invited recently to go along to a marketplace event where we can promote our services to uh, yeah. parent carers who might yeah. want to through via personalisation because for parent carers the option of first lot budgets will is what they're looking to bring in yeah, uh, yeah, next yeah. year. And I have real concerns about doing that because I can't see any parent carers spending money on buying emotional support for themselves no, because no, their priorities no, in this case no. are going to be elsewhere. Well, it's a really dangerous path to trade down. It's very difficult. Once you start giving people money, um, uh, Without, uh, then, then if one of the interesting things is you, they say that promotes choice. Well, if people got money, sometimes they use choice not to buy the service because it's so expensive. I don't want to spend that, you know. I'll, I'll and yeah, we're not going there. Um, uh, uh, so the difference between a personal budget and direct payment is simple. Um, in at law, if money leaves Herefordshire Council and goes into the coffers of the, the, the bank account of the disabled person or their mother or somebody on their behalf. That's a direct payment. Money's actually leaving the local authority. And that's law. It's, uh, the, the disabled person's got to agree to that or somebody on their behalf's got to agree to it. And it's subject to all sorts of rules and regulations. The direct payments, my father, I live with my father. And you could buy direct payments, like I never had idea of knowledge. I was yeah. in the five years that I looked after him 24-7. But the direct payment couldn't be paid to me. It had to go out to somebody to come in to look after father yes. while I was away. Yeah. You... Sometimes we feel that we don't want to leave our, yeah. our parents with somebody that they don't know, especially with yeah. dementia, yeah. when they get frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, the, the, the law was changed in 2002 to say that direct payments could be spent on family carers. Well, when, I, when I went for it, they refused me. Okay. The um, says it can't be. We have raised that. Well, they can't trump the law with local policies. The, the law says you, you, the, you, there's no restriction on paying a direct payment to family members as long as the. But, it, uh, but there is if the family member lives in the same household. If you live in the same household, uh, if, the, if you don't live in the same household, there's no restriction at all. No, it's not. Um, but if you live in the same household, then the local authority can do it if it's satisfied it's necessary. And increasingly, I think local authority, I think Shropshire, might, I'm, I'm nearly every authority, and Shropshire's the biggest authority, will be sometimes using, allowing people to have direct payments to pay family members in their own household. You have to make an exception in circumstances. Yeah, I mean, that's a problem because the local authority says it's exceptional, and the law actually isn't phrased in that phrase. The lo the, the, all the law says it's got to be considered necessary. The contract that comes out, it says, right. specifically says you can't, and I've not signed my contract. Yeah, well, 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 the whole point about standard forms, if you're a lawyer, is to just put lines through them. Just, just, just put red lines through them and just say, yeah, and then initially in the, and say, I agree everything. Oh, by the way, I crossed out all those 14 clauses on page six because I don't agree with them. Um, you're allowed to do that. Um, just sort of, you know, just, just treat forms with disrespect. <laughs> And if they have a little white box, there used to be a lovely thing that if they had a white box saying, don't write in this because this is for official purposes, what you do is you get a candle and you put it on that so you make nobody, they can't write in it either, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, be, be anarchic with forms. Um, so, so, so they've got a standard form and just say, we, we, we agree this, but not that, and send it back. And they'll often say, fine. A direct payment is when money leaves the local authority and goes into somebody's account. Um, a, a, a personal budget doesn't actually leave the local authority. Although they try to call everything a personal budget, 
because personal budgets don't exist, um, legally, a direct payment is money going out. A personal budget is something else. A personal budget um, is where the local authority holds on to the money, but it tries to... Inv there are two ways. Let's, I'll explain how this works. There are two ways you can calculate a personal budget. Now, I'm going to give you a completely neutral um, explanation of this. Um, so I'm going to call one of them the good way. Uh, uh, now, there's 166 social services authorities in England. Ten of them are doing it this way, and I think it's a good way. I'm Fred. I've got learning disabilities, moderate learning disabilities. I live on my own in supported housing. In fact, my sister lives around the corner, and she does an awful lot for me, but I don't really realise that. And the local authority come and see me and say, look, Fred, um, we'd love to give you a direct payment, but you don't have the ability to consent to that, and your sister doesn't want one, so we can't do that. So we're going to give you a personal budget. OK. Now, we've worked out that you have two days care home, uh, um, um, day centre a week, and you have four hours home help a week, and we drive you to and from the day centre. And we've worked out that that is costing us £142 a week. Us, Herefordshire Council. So you've got a personal budget of £142. How would you like us to spend it in a way that maximised your happiness and well-being? Well-being's a big word. It's almost two. Um, I mean, I mean you, you go to a day centre twice a week. Now, do you really want to go to a day centre twice a week? I mean, haven't you considered more well, well, options? You know, I don't know, paragliding. Um, uh, 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 and so you, you try and involve the disabled person in the assessment. Now, that seems to me a brilliant idea. The sort of evangelical people about personalisation call it self-directed support, SDS, as if it's never been thought of before. But many of us will remember that 10 years ago we had a thing called person-centred planning and 25 years ago we had a thing called individually tailored packages of care. It's not new, but it's a good idea. So that, brothers and sisters, is the good way. The other 156 social services authorities are not doing it that way. What they're doing is they're giving you one of these self-assessment questionnaires with just tick boxes. What happens is there are 20 page forms or something like that and you just tick. These are the things, this is all the help I need during the day, this is what I need at night, this is what I need at other places. And you, you fill out and you just tick boxes. And the, the, the first the one might say I need a lot of help getting up, washing, dressing. I need quite a lot of help. I need a reasonable amount of help. I don't need a lot of help. I need no help. So it's sort of, but then at the bottom it says, but I get all the help I need from my carer. I get some of the help, I get a little help, I get no help from my carer. And each page goes on like that and you tick it. The local authority then feed that form, because it's got no white boxes really, generally, into what's called a resource allocation system. Has anybody heard of a RAS? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They feed it into a machine, which is called a RAS, and it just scores all the ticks. If you tick this, you might get 10 points, and if you tick that, you might get five points. So you might say, um, I need a lot of help during the day, so that tick might give you 15 points. But at the bottom, you might say, but I get a lot of help from my carer. So you then lose 75% of that point, because it's called a carer deflator. So you, basically, this goes into a computer, which, is, which reads the assessment which this person with moderately advanced learning disability or Alzheimer's disease has just filled out, it then is an algorithm, it scores it, and says, Fred has got 200 points. <coughs> OK. So we've never seen Fred. We've never been there. We, he's filled this form out. He's told us what care he's getting. He's told us what he needs. And we've said Fred's got 100, uh, 200 points. We've then got to work out what a point is worth in Hereford or Shropshire. 
Uh, the point is what it costs to buy care. So a point will be less in Hereford than Shropshire, because Shropshire's richer than Hereford. Um, uh, we are the country bumpkins. Apples and chickens is all we do. Um, but a point will be much more expensive in Kensington and Chelsea, because care is very expensive to buy there. So it'll vary. So each, each authority has to do its own assessment system. And it has to assign a value to a point. So let's say Hereford says a point's worth 50p. Then they have to reduce it. Even though you've sort of scientifically worked out what the care market is, you then reduce it by um, what's called a cost abatement multiplier. And that's between 15 and 35%. Why do you reduce a figure that you've worked out scientifically? The government says um, you do it to avoid inducing dependency. I've written a lot about this, and you just will need to be drinking when you read that article. I mean, it, you know, what's that about? And then you get a figure. You then, so you might then say to Fred, well, you're a point worth 40p, and you've got 200 points. So the machine says your indicative amount, your personal budget, is 80 pounds. And Fred's sister says, yeah, but, but you're saying Fred's got a personal budget of 80 pounds, but he's actually getting 142 pounds worth of services. And the, the social worker says, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a serious problem. I mean, Fred is getting a lot more than he should be getting. Um, a lot of people are losing out because of Fred. I mean, we've actually had to take three disabled children out this week and slaughter them because we just don't have enough money to, to balance our budget. And th I'm not saying that conversation, but, but this conversation is happening up and down the country. These computers that have never seen Fred, that have been, you know, programmed by geeks, basically, are then coming out with figures that are substantially below what it costs. And that's being used for some discussion. Now, everybody will have to have a personal budget, but my clients are not interested in that personal budget. That, too, is going in the bin. They're going to say, I'm interested in you meeting need. And the courts have said, these things don't exist in law. The local authorities have got to meet need. But personal budgets are, are causing a lot of distress for families and carers because they're often... I mean, I've just done a very big paper on it. It'll be on my website. It's called Putting the Cart Before the Horse. Um, we've analysed a very large number of these. It's quite a technical paper. But these are always now coming well within. And if you've got learning disabilities or some non... I mean, most... most most RASs are based on the cost of providing for older people, and of course that's quite cheap compared to providing for people with mental health problems or learning disabilities or particularly sensory impairments. So they're coming out well below what people are getting. Can I just ask how this applies to post-18? Because obviously personal budgets are going to be promoted very much for uh, now for young people. And education and, and education all sorts education of things, yeah. Sorts yeah. Of yeah. Things. yeah. So how does the liable family... Yeah, uh, do, does that come? Well, the liable family rule like, does doesn't apply. Well, well, I mean, you, you, I, I'm not really going to have much time to go into disabled children. Um, we don't. I mean, with children, there isn't. The, I mean, parents have responsibilities, um, which start off as total when the child is born, but by the age of, I don't know. This is the Gillick case, basically. You know, in my daughter's case, it was about eleven. Um, they tell you to, you know, go away, and you know, all you can do is give them a bit of advice, which they, which they ignore, you know. Um, so, so it's a withering right, um, and um, of course, it's not against the law to say I can't cope, take my kid. You're not sent to prison for that. The local authority has a duty to safeguard and promote the interests of children in need. And the the guidance on care, which I'm going to come on to now, is good on that. It's just saying parents of uh, it says carers, including parents of disabled children, have a right to work like everybody else. They have a right to a normal life like everybody else. They have a right uh, because they gain emotionally and socially as well as financially. So, you know, it, it is more difficult discussion with the social services if you've got a disabled child. But, but they're doing it, a personalisation project and they're doing exactly what you Yeah, yeah. Well, with personalisation, we're, yeah, yeah. we're not going to be playing that game. It's not in law. It doesn't exist in law. And, 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 and the law is that they've got to meet need. Um, and 
A thing like the, the, the Chronic Sick and Disabled Persons Act, that's, a, that's an act that applies to disabled children, as to adults. It's, it, it, it's from cradle to grave. So the, the, those, those rights exist. But there is more difficulty in the sense that you can't say we don't assume willingness to revive, but, but we shouldn't put unreasonable care and responsibilities. Sorry. Um, what I was wondering is, so they, they, do, they do use the questionnaire in this county and um, the RAS as well. So if somebody is assessed in that way, you know, you're saying put it in the bin, put it away. Uh, well, I mean, you, you need a lawyer to tell you that. But yes, yes, but well, practically speaking, if a person does that, you know, probably they won't get a service. Well, the Ombudsman said an assessment should, from beginning to end, should be no more than six weeks. And the courts have repeatedly said, self I mean, there's a case against Cornwall saying self-assessment is unlawful. You, you can only do it if you agree to it. You know, if you want to self-assess yourself, you can. So, so what you're saying is, look, I've got this form. I want a social worker here with me to do that. Now, the social worker will come and fill the form out, but you will staple to it 26 letters from your cousins, uncles, aunts, your priest, your neighbours, saying, if Fred doesn't get this, he'll suffer significant harm. So... Um, those forms will be used, but we need a social worker there. Sorry, I interrupted. So I, what I was thinking was, if that does go ahead, they do the service. Yeah. Normally, most people don't realise. No, they don't. Think, no, I have no. to do this. I better do it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And most social workers think it's law. That so they're not being naughty. Then the package comes out exactly as you say, half of what. Yeah, yeah. And then they say, hang on a second, I don't agree with this. Can they then say, listen, I want you to come and do social? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't agree with this. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so that would be perfectly fine. To yeah, do. yeah. And the local authority, when they say what your budget is, they will, it may not be immediately obvious, but they will be telling you that it's only indicative. Yes, yeah. But, but often they tell you that if you don't agree that, you may get less. Yeah. You know, there, there's all sorts of things that are going with those things. We've done quite a lot of research on that. I'm sure it's not Shropshire. I mean, the, the, the worst ones are London and, and the home counties. So Shropshire's Paragon. Um, but yes, you know, this is the problem that even social workers don't have a lot of training on social care law. Um, so they think this is part of the, the legal system. They're not being dishonest. Uh, and, and, and there's huge, it's very difficult for families to complain because they're very fearful of losing what they've got sometimes. Um, and it's all unwritten and unsaid, and they're all good people, but that's what's happening. And then people are being led to believe that we don't do community care anymore or children's assessments anymore. We do personal budgets. This is the new game. And hardly anybody knows there's no law there. It's just a, it's just a fashion. Yeah. And it's not working. I mean, these, 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 the whole thing, the local authorities have spent a fortune on these systems, and they're not going to work. They're all going to be binned in three years' time. But it's causing huge upset to families who are being given a figure that's bears little resemblance to the package they're getting at the moment. Yes. My understanding within Shropshire Council is that it starts with a self-assessment. Yeah. And then there will be a, a professional visit. And right. And the social worker will do their assessment. And there's a middle road mm. where they agree. Because what we found was that, as you said yourself, that sometimes the service use of the person who needs understanding of their situation is very different than perhaps the yeah. professional yeah. service. So my understanding is in Shropshire, the common practice is that they actually get both, and you agree in yeah. the line, yeah. and that's what comes out with the figure. So that's the actual assessment. My understanding of the, the RAS is, as you've explained. So yeah, yeah. Fair. I mean, our research shows that the RAS is are being, you know, most local authorities that have invested heavily in them are now realising they're actually not working, um, and so they're beginning to abandon them. But the huge cost. Okay. My daughter's just turned 18. Yeah. 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 There's a word that um, rhymes with Rolex. <laughs> um, I want to but I just wanted clarification. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we sort of thought, well, if we'd had a personal budget, we could have bought whatever approach yeah. you needed. Yeah. But now that we haven't, because health don't do personal budgets. Well, health can do personal budgets. Um, they can't do direct payments, so that's a big problem. But they can do personal budgets, and they should do personal budgets. Um, they will be very criticised. 
Um, and once you're continuing health care, all your health and social care needs fall. Now, the trouble is the NHI are very difficult. I mean, you know, they are very difficult on this. And, you, you know, you're going to need somebody to hold your hand on that one and just say, look, I'm sorry, you know, this is it. And the way often with the NHS is to go to your MP or to go to a councillor or to go to the newspaper. I mean, we don't say to the, you know, Hereford <laughs> primary care trust, I mean, they're all going to go anyway, so they're... Um, very shortly. We don't say we're going to sue you, which is what we say to local authorities because we are friendly. Um, with the NHS, you say, um, you know, this is unlawful, um, and we've got Midlands today coming down. Um, what time would you like us to film you? Um, that's what they don't like. They don't like that. But, you, you know, that's nonsense. <coughs> Once you're continuing care, it's like you move from Shropshire to Hereford. That, it's, it, it's the new authority's got all the same responsibilities. They've got to meet all the health and social care needs. This idea that they've only got clinical responsibilities is nonsense. Um, but they'll look you in the face and say, they, they, they might look you in the face and say no. Uh, and so you've got to have somebody that will support you in that. Um, and it's under a thing called the, the, the NHS Continuing Care Framework Guidance 2009. Yesterday a new one came out, um, which will come into force in April, but it's the, in much the same. So. I was twenty, my at the same uh -huh. and my friend came to the patient and they gave me everything I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> what we that's just so good. What we're going to do is we, I'm, doing, I'm doing some research with a, a big children's charity and we're going to do information and standard letters, but we're also going to do YouTubes about people for, who just say brief things like that. You know, I was told this. Because so many people are told that. And they think they're the only, you might think you were the only one, but in fact, you're not the only one. And then you need somebody like yourself to stand up and say, look, I was told this, 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 this is what I said, and suddenly I got it. We shouldn't have to blackmail them, though, should we? Really no. What we do. You have to fight, yeah, unfortunately. The National Assistance Act that underpins social care. Yeah. Is there any chance that that's going to be gotten rid of? Yeah, it's going I to thought, be gotten rid of. Yeah. yeah. When? Um, there's a care and support bill going through Parliament, a draft care and support bill at the moment. The, 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 that new act, if it comes into force, won't come into force until um, at the earliest April 2015. Um, but obviously we're working very hot, hot on that. The, uh, um, it's, it's a very technical paper and we're working on it. And the, 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 the useful thing is that 2015 is like to be on an election year. Uh, and the government doesn't want this to go wrong. But yes, it is going to be uh, repealed. It is 65 years old. It, is, it, it, it could do with codifying, but they, they've got to do it in a proper way. Would that get rid of what's now termed as the duty of care? No. No. The councils would still have yeah. the duty of care? Yeah. Everything will be all right. This is the darkest period. It's going to get better. Uh, everything's going to get better. I mean, we might have to live through the welfare reforms next year, which will be awful if you're on benefits. But after that, we as a British people, English people, will start electing sensible governments. <laughs> I don't know, they don't exist yet. They don't exist yet, but it will be all right. It will be all right. Somebody will come along. And it will be all right. So, so what is interesting, and I, I, is that we have, um, we we sort of, in the mid in seventies, we're in the similar dark period because things weren't very good in the seventies either, actually. Um, but when I was in, uh, I was a solicitor in the seventies, and, and 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 I thought the welfare state, that sort of welfare state, would carry on forever. But it didn't. It suddenly changed. A lot of people think that the, the, the settlement we have at the moment, with everything being privatised and you know, everything being cut, will carry on forever. But I think we're about to have... The, I think these things go in 30-year cycles. We've had 30 years of neoliberalism. It hasn't really made us better off. You know, we are bust. Um, there are hugely rich people, and the majority of the population are not in a very good way. Things don't look very good. It's not a, it's not a system that you think, you know, you say, oh, isn't this great? Hasn't it done really well? I think things will change. I mean, the, the, the reason I think it changed so radically at the end of the 70s was 
you know, we elected Voldemort, basically. And, 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 and you know, <laughs> boom, we had this hugely strong individual that did these things. We don't have that. But something will happen, because I think as a population, this system isn't working, and the group it, it really isn't working for are carers. Not disabled elderly or people, curiously. It's carers that's taking that strain. And they are stretched, because a lot of them are having to work as well, or trying to work. And they're not, you know, they're, and they're, they're going to be very poor. So, 